Hello my friends, it's Bruns here and welcome back to the channel. So as you know, we've been playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre and this game is an absolute blast. And I've got here for you 16 tips on how to play victim. So tip number one is be stealthy. This game was designed with stealth being the major part of the gameplay. And by being stealthy, I mean try not to make any noise whenever you play mini games or whenever you're running through bones and going near chickens. Tip number two is learn to run to lose line of sight and then you hide from your killers. You can't loop killers like in Dead by Daylight. You only have a limited amount of stamina in this game. So once they find you, you have to sprint, dash, lose line of sight, hide, and then you can try and see if you lose them. The thing is if one killer is on you and you start looping them, another killer will very soon be on you, especially if it's a pre-made team. So don't try to loop them. Just try to hide and play on their paranoia. Tip number three is hiding plain sight. I mean, there's been so many instances when I've been playing this game already and I just hide somewhere that I just think, okay, I'm dead and they just walk past me. And even though both teams are on third person here, you can still do some amazing play and hiding right in front of them and they will never find you it's crazy really tip number four is use the intuition perk to learn the location of the objectives so the way this work is once you pick up the valve or the fuse the next step on the objective will highlight for you on the map so the valve you have to install is somewhere it will show on the map so you just have to look around and see where the aura is highlighted same when you grab the fuse the fuse box will be highlighted and then you know where to go once you complete the mini game on the fuse box the basement exit will be highlighted for you so you know where to go. This is a really important perk and very strong perk to use at the beginning of the game when you're still figuring out how everything works and where everything is. This is probably the best way for you to learn where everything is by finding out using this perk. Once you've learned, then you can move on from it and you can get rid of the perk because next time you grab something, you know where the locations are and maybe one of your teammates have already told you what the next part of the objective is. Tip number five is use the perk two tracks that's gonna highlight the boxes which have the unlock tools the screwdrivers which you can use to open locks so as soon as you out of your restraints in the basement those two boxes they will highlight in the map so you know exactly where you need to go this is again a really good way to just learn where things are in the map and within the game once you've learned then you can move on from this perk as well tip number six if you're likely to be opening lots of doors maybe playing Julie or Connie exit strategy perk is a really good perk to give information and help your teammates. So this perk is gonna highlight the door you've just opened for a set amount of time. Depending the level the perk is, then the door will be highlighted for a longer period or not. So as you guys might know, I play with G a lot and most of the time we never start the game together. So whenever I've opened a door, I said to him, just look around, see where it is. And he said, yes, and then he just comes to me and then we leave together. So really good information perk to use. Tip number seven is have the right perks that complement your character. But the beauty about Texas Chainsaw massacre is that you can spec ability points into your characters so you could have a character that is very strong in stealth and weak in strength but you can completely change that and turn the tables and have them stronger because of the way the skill tree works. So you can put a maximum of 25 extra points into one attribute. That's really massive and it can really change how your character plays. Now depending how your character plays, you might want to use certain perks. So you might be playing with Sonny and you might decide to spec a lot into stealth and then because he's got decent proficiency, it might make sense to use perks like efficient locksmith on him, which Will give you a chance of not consuming the unlock tool when you use it. So build your character and then pick the perks that will complement them. Tip number eight is stick to teammates that complement your abilities. When G and I are playing, I play Connie, he plays Leland because they're both very different play styles. Le Leland is all about being more aggressive and knocking the family members down, whilst Connie is the fragile one. She's got very low health, but she's very good at unlocking all the doors. So that's a good pair. Another really good pair is is Anna or Sony with Julie because Julie is very good at being stealthy and not making any noise when she's unlocking doors and then Sony can be spotting all the family members around whilst Julie is doing that. Anna is just a tank really so you can she can kind of float between both teams and she's quite good on her own anyway. And that leads me to tip number nine if things go south you might need to split up and then try to regroup later. So don't try to stick with your teammates in the middle of a chase just because you don't want to separate. Sometimes being separated is just part of the game and then you can try and regroup later 
hopefully with use of some perks that will give you some information. Tip number 10, I would say always carry an unlock tool with you. You never know when you're gonna need one and to escape the maps, you will need to unlock quite a few doors. So it might happen that you're playing Leland or your team is on the other side being chased or whatever, no one's around you, you have an opportunity to escape and it's gonna take you a little longer to unlock those doors, but you can do it. So it's always good to have an unlock tool with you. And if you don't have one, just go and find one. Tip number 11, use wells if you are cornered. Now this is one of those situations where you might have to learn where the wells are as well. The wells will take you back to the basement and someone asked me the other day, can you climb back up the wells? No, you can't, but you're gonna go back down to the basement. So you're just gonna have to make your way up again. So using a well can be a really good way to escape if you're cornered. Also, it could be a really good way to escape via the basement exit if that one's been opened. The only thing with using a well is that if you're low on health, you will be incapacitated and then you're gonna have to recover. And you know you can only recover once in the game. Once you go down again and your health goes to zero, then you're just gonna bleed out. Tip number 12, while searching or doing a repair, grandpa can't see you. So don't stop doing what you're doing when he screams. Just keep going. There's a lot of players who are searching through boxes and then as soon as grandpa starts screaming, they stop doing it. And then they just lose some precious time there. Just keep going. If you're unlocking doors or any kind of mini game, just keep going. However, tip number 13 is grandpa can see you if you are going through crawl spaces and climbing stairs, for instance. I'm not quite sure about this one, but I think if you are kicking the generator, he can see you as well because that's not a mini game. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, please. Tip number 14. This is about the skill tree. Now, you get skill points per player account. So you can take the points from a character skill tree and put into another character. You can even respect your family members tree and use those points to put into your victims and vice versa. So there's loads of potentials to try different combinations, try new characters because you can level them right up. It only means that if you try a new character, the perks are all gonna be level one. But if you already know how the game works, then you can probably skip perks like intuition or two tracks and you can go straight for the good perks and start leveling up those ones. So play around with it as much as you can. And then tip number 15 is once you get to the end of your tree, then respect and take a path you didn't before. Try and unlock the whole tree so that you can make informed choices about where you are going. The only thing is you're going to have the random perks which are going to pop up here and there. They're always going to be on the same spots in on your tree and they're always obviously going to be random. So if you respect, you're going to lose that random perk, but you might get it again. And also if you have your eye on a specific random perk, perk, you might want to keep respecting your tree until you get that random perk. Now tip number 16 is probably the most important one and that is have fun. I think most of you will agree with me when I say this game is absolutely brilliant and there's lots of reasons for us to have fun with this game, being a family member or a victim. So try different play styles, try different characters, try different builds and just try to enjoy it because this game has so much to offer and I really see this game staying here for the long term. If you watched the video until now, please consider subscribing and drop me a like that helps massively in keeping the channel. Also, I would love to hear down the comments what are the tips that you have for your beginner fellow victims? What have I missed? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.